This problem essentially guides us from Fourier series all the way to Fourier transform. And the first step of this derivation is to rederive this Fourier series expression into this exponential form. So if you study Fourier series before, you might be familiar with expressions that look something like this. So usually there is the numerator is 2 pi n instead of n pi x, and uh, sometimes you might see the constant b being pulled out, and then the summation starting from 1 instead of 0 over here. And it doesn't really matter how you express it. It essentially is th the same thing. So for expressions like this, you can see there's an L over here. This represents the length of the range. So in this case, for infinite, uh, for Fourier series like this, this could be an expression for a periodic function that repeats itself after every n uh, interval of L. So your function might look something like this. And then it's going to keep repeating itself at 3L, 4L, and all the way to infinity. And then in this case, in this scenario over here, you can see that the length of the interval is equal to 2A. So it's just, it's pretty much the exact same expression, but in our case, in the problem that Griff Griffiths gives us, it corresponds to the case where L is equal to 2A. And if you just substitute this in, you can see that you get this exact uh, sine and cosine expression. And then uh, whether you put this divided by 2 or uh, into the constant b naught or not, it doesn't really matter. This is just a matter of presentation. If you do put this divided by 2 for the b naught, and later on there's an integral that's going to look slightly better. So it's just a matter of preference. So it doesn't really matter if you put a divided by 2 over here. So the, these might be some expressions for Fourier series that you might have encountered before. But in, in this problem, we're going to be adopting this particular expression over here. And then we're going to use this to arrive at this uh, bottom expression over here. So in order to go from the expression that Griffiths gives us, so I'm just going to copy it out once over here. So we have a n sine n pi x divided by a plus b n cosine n pi x divided by a. So in order to go from this expression to the exponential uh, expression, we're going to have to use Euler's formula. So Euler's formula is e to the power of i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. So what this means is that e to the power of n pi x is equal to cosine n pi divided by ax plus i sine n pi divided by ax. And then e to the power of negative i n pi x divided by a is equal to cosine negative n pi divided by ax. So you can see it's the same thing. So here we have n pi divided by n pi x divided by a. Here we have negative n pi divided by x. And we, all we have to do is just to put this extra negative sign on the inside. So we have negative n pi a over x, n pi x over a. And uh, as you know, for cosine functions, you can just get rid of the negative sign in the middle because it's an even function. And then for sine functions, you can take the negative sign outside because it's an odd function. So you get these two expressions. So using this, we can derive uh, cosine x and sine x in terms of these e to the power of i expressions. So if you just, if you add the two expressions together, you get e to the power of i n pi divided by a x plus e to the power of negative i n pi divided by a x. You see that this is just equal to 2 cosine n pi x divided by a. And so we can just dump the 2 over to the other side, and then we get something like this. So cosine can be expressed by this expression. And then we can do something similar for sine, but this time we're going to subtract these two expressions from each other. So we have the e term and then minus e to the power of negative i n pi x divided by a. And then in this case, you can see that this is equal to 2i sine n pi x divided by a. And then as before, we can just dump these terms over to the other side. We just divide this by 2i. And then we get this expression for sine. So how is this going to be useful? So we're going to use this expression to derive the exponential form of Fourier series. So for this, uh, for the expression that we have over here, we're going to break this up into several parts. So for the part where n is equal to 0, I'm just going to drag that out. So when n is equal to 0, sine is equal to 0. So the only term that survives is just the b naught. And then I'm going to take out, I'm going to separate the sine and the cosines. 
so I get something like this. So sine n pi divided by 8x plus vn cosine n pi divided by 8x. And then now we can substitute in directly the expressions that we just previously derived. So sine n pi uh, x divided by a, that's just equal to this expression over here. So we get n pi divided by a x minus e to the power of negative i, n pi divided by a x. And then we derive the, uh, di uh, divide this by 2i. And then we do something similar for this cosine term. So here there's really not nothing much special going on, we're just doing substitution. So we have plus e to the power of negative i n pi divided by ax. And then we divide this by 2. So this is just this expression over here. So now we can group up some of the like terms. So you can see that there are two of these terms with this e to the power of positive i times something. So we can just try to group those terms together. So by grouping those terms together, you get v naught plus you get this summation symbol. So first we're going to focus on terms that uh, have this term stuck to it. So you can see that there's a there is a a n divided by two i, and then there is also a b n divided by two. And then these terms will have this e to the power of i n pi x divided by a attached to it. And then we do the exact same thing for the other term. So now we're going to focus on terms with this negative i n pi x divided by a attached to it. So by doing this, we get negative a n divided by 2i, which is just this term over here. And then we have a plus b n divided by 2. And then these terms will have this e to the power of negative i attached to it. And then we can actually further combine these terms together by considering that 1 over i is just equal to negative i. So I can just take this i and then bring it up and then give it a negative sign. And I can do the same thing over here. So I give this a negative sign, just takes away the, the negative sign over here. So you get an expression like this. So here it becomes bn minus i a n divided by 2. So I think this looks slightly better. So we can do something similar over here. We get i a n plus b n divided by 2. So we're almost done here. So now we're going to define some constant c n. And the c n is going to be equal to, so I'm going to define this uh, c n to be equal to negative i a n plus b n divided by 2, when n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and all the way to infinity. And then when n is equal to 0, c n is going to be equal to v naught. And then when n is equal to a negative number, so when n goes from negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, all the way to negative infinity, I'm going to let cn be equal to i times a negative n plus b negative n divided by 2. So there's a negative n because if you substitute in negative 1, this just becomes a1, b1. This is negative 2, this becomes a2, b2. So, it's, so these terms are perfectly defined. So if you find this negative n here uh, kind of weird, uh, so just remind yourself that it makes perfect sense. So using this notation that we have here, we can actually substitute this cn straight into this expression. So you see that f of x, so we have this b0, and b0 incidentally is equal to c0, right? So when n is equal to 0, so we actually, I actually put c0 over here. So when n is equal to 0, c0 is equal to b0. And then for this uh, term over here, bn minus ian, this is just equal to cn, and this goes for, from n equal to 1 to infinity. So we add n equal to 1 to infinity, and then we can just substitute in the expression cn. And we have e to the power of i n pi x divided by a. And then for this expression over here, instead of from n going from 1 equal to infinity, I'm going to redefine it a bit. I'm going to let it go from negative 1 to negative infinity. So if I make this uh, kind of alteration over here, you can see that if n goes from negative 1 to a negative infinity, the e term over here just becomes i n pi x over a. So you can see that when n is equal to 1, I have this uh, negative, so you can, you can essentially put this negative sign over here. So you have this negative 1 times a bunch of constants. And then when n is equal to 2, I have negative 2 times a bunch of constants. And then now that I've made, made this alteration, you can see that it's 
exactly the same thing. When I have negative 1, I just have negative 1 times some constants and negative 2 times some constants and so on. So you can see that the alterations that I'm making here is perfectly, uh, it's com exactly the same as our original expression over here. And then for this expression over here, i a n plus b n over i over 2, it's going to be changed into something like this. So once again, by the same reasoning. So if you have n equal to 1, you get a1, n equal to 2, you get a2. And then in this case, now that n starts from negative 1, if I have n equal to negative 1, uh, you have negative of negative 1, so that's just a1. So it just gives you back the original expression. So it's perfectly fine for me to alter the expression like this. And then as you can see, incidentally, this is exactly equal to the expression that we defined over here. So once again, this is going to be equal to cn. So under our definition of cn, we can substitute in this in as well. And then now you can see that we can actually combine these three terms. We can go from negative infinity to negative 1, and then from negative 1, uh, and the next step will be 0, and then the next step will be from 1 to infinity. So essentially I can just combine everything like this. So n starts from negative infinity all the way to infinity, and then we have cn times e to the power of i, so let's just write this again, i n pi x divided by a. So finally we have arrived at this expression.